Uh, hello boys and girls and welcome back to Concrete and Cranes. I am excited about this VBS, but I am sort of sad that this is going to be our last uh, Bible story time together. But I am glad that you were here with us and thank you so much for spending time with us and uh, just listening to our, the Bible story and learning from it and also doing our craft with us and everything, everybody that everything is done in VBS. Thank you so much for being a part of that. And uh, I just want to remind us one more time of our week's Bible verse, Philippians 1, 6. And I've written it out on this big uh, piece of cardboard right here. So let's say it together on the count of three. Okay, one, two, three. Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Very good, boys and girls. Thank you so much for saying that with me. That is a very important Bible verse, isn't it? Because we can trust God to be at work in our lives, and we know that he's going to complete it. Like we, uh, we learned last week, God starts it and he also finishes it. And it gives us a lot of confidence when that happens, when we can know that from God's Word. Hey, boys and girls, we're going to have a Bible story today, and I've also got a special little video that I'm going to show you. But I also want to show some small, little, tiny tools that I have that I use for my work. And so I'm going to get those right now. I got some of my extra special tools with me right now, and I was going to show those to you. They're kind of tiny, and they're quiet. And you know what, boys and girls? I think it's very important to remember that God uses all kinds of people. Last time I shared with you a bunch of loud, big tools. And maybe sometimes we feel that only God uses those people that are loud and big and they make a lot of noise and they maybe are easy to get around with and talking and lots of excitement. But you know what, boys and girls, God also uses those people that are quiet and that and pray, and that spend time with Him, and know how to talk to other people quietly. And so I want to share with you some uh, tools right here that are kind of tiny, and, um, and that I use also for my work. How about this one right here? This is a, um, called an ignition wrench. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is real tiny. From some of the smallest uh, nuts and bolts that I use to tighten up at work, very tiny. It's called an ignition wrench. And there's a couple of different sizes. Of course, they're all kind of tiny still. But uh, kind of interesting, and um, I use those. Again, that is my tiniest. And then I also have something called an Allen wrench. An Allen wrench, very tiny, sort of an L-shaped tool, kind of funny looking, looks like a shepherd's staff maybe. And uh, I use that to tighten down very tiny screws. And, um, and so, yeah, it doesn't seem to be very much, does it? It seems to be only just a piece of metal that has a little angle to it. But it's a very important tool because it helps me get to the smallest of places where there are very tiny screws and I can make those tighter with this tool. Very, very tiny, very quiet, doesn't make a whole lot of noise. But if I don't have this tool, I'm going to be in trouble because I won't be able to get to that little screw that needs a little bit of tightening. Okay, so that is a very important tool. And I have those in different sizes too. Here's the big one, big grandpa tool here. And it's about the same shape, of course. But we have those in all kinds of sizes. I also have really tiny pliers. Look at these pliers. These are the tiniest pliers that I have. This one looks like a crocodile a little bit, you can see. And I can use this tool to get way back into the back of maybe a tiny corner. And I can grab something really tiny in the dark corner that I can barely see. And I can grab that with these pair of pliers right here. And these are sort of, of the same size, but I can use this little plier to cut off little baby wires that are real tiny and are very delicate and I have to be very careful that I don't break those wires so I have this very special set of pliers that can do that for me and what if I had really big pliers that were super big they would they would crush that wire wouldn't they and so with these baby pliers really tiny I can actually help that wire stay healthy and I can make it work with the electrics and everything well, I also have some really cool pliers right here you might see these in the hospital they're called hemostats and uh, they're kind of cool now you can put your finger in here and if I pull down really hard and I'm not going to do that here of course boys and girls <laughs> but you can clamp it down you see how it can clamp and it won't open up again see and uh, I can use that to clamp down some uh, special items that I have and I can keep everything together and uh, things that are maybe a little bit spring loaded and you see how that makes a little clicking sound and at the very end it has a very very small uh, grippers right there and boy I wouldn't want to get my fingers stuck on that okay so you can hear it clicking a little bit and I use that from time to time if I need a third hand so I have my two hands right here and I need one more hand to hold something in place and I can use that little clamp tool to do that it's called a hemostat okay 
And then uh, I also have, you wouldn't believe it, this is kind of small. Of course, you know this is a drill, right? One of my tiniest, tiniest drills that I use. And I'm very careful with this one because if you put too much force on it, it's going to snap right off. But sometimes I need to drill a hole that's really, 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 really tiny. And I'll use this tiny drill to do that. Okay, I also have some tiny screwdrivers. How about this one? This one is really tiny for maybe something like uh, repairing your glasses or, or anything like that or a small toy that you may have. And uh, I have a really tiny screwdriver for that. You don't need a big screwdriver for that one at all. I also have another tiny screwdriver. This one is a flat tip screwdriver. You can see it can spin real nice. And uh, you can do all kinds of tiny work with that as well. You almost need a magnifying glass to see how tiny that is. And, and to look at maybe a tool or a, a toy that you're fixing, you might need even a magnifying glass to see what you're doing. It's so tiny. And I also have a baby hammer. Can you believe they make hammers this small? You would think really big hammers, uh, that's the, all the work that is being done with big hammers. But this little hammer right here, boy, I can do really tiny work with this. And I have used this a lot to get into really tiny places where I can tap on something real quick and make something come loose. And uh, I can't do that with a big hammer because a really big hammer would never fit in those tiny places. And so I've used this one a lot. I like this hammer and it costs quite a bit too to get that little hammer, believe it or not. And then I have a crazy tool here. It's not really tiny, but I want to show you my crazy tool. How about this one? Have you ever seen a tool that is has a bend in it? Seems like that somebody should have straightened that out. Is there something wrong with this tool? Well, no, boys and girls, there's nothing wrong with this tool. It is actually a fancy way of screwing things down. And I can use, uh, I can hold it upright like this and I can turn it like I'm doing right now. And I can put a screw in and I would not even need an electrical screwdriver or anything like that. If What if I, my battery runs low? I can use a tool like this and it twirls around. Pretty cool, huh? And actually I use it like this. Maybe our camera person can help us. I just kind of use it like this and I can turn it around and around and around until the screw goes in and it's very handy to have. So there's nothing wrong at all with this tool, boys and girls. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? God uses all kinds of people in all kinds of different ways and God made you very special and he loves you very much and he wants to use you. And remember our Bible verse one more time. It is Philippians 1, 6. Be confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And God wants to use you. Hey, boys and girls, I'm getting ready for my Bible story. That's the next thing that we're going to do right now. And so, hey, why won't you just go ahead and get ready? How about you guys come with me? Let's go upstairs and let's find out what our Bible story is about today. We are ready now for our Bible story. And I have had a lot of fun talking to you about those big tools, loud tools, and small tools. And we had uh, just got to show you all those different tools. And you know what, boys and girls, when I was looking throughout all those tools and sharing those with you, it just reminded me that God can use all kinds of people. Isn't that wonderful? God uses all kinds of people for his glory, great and small, different capabilities, different talents for him. And I'm so glad that he does that. Not all of us have to be the same, do we? Well, we're going to, well, it's kind of sad, but we are going to finish up one of our last, our last VBS Bible story times together. And I enjoyed this time with you. I had great times sharing with you the different crafts and the tools and everything. And uh, share this with uh, somebody else. Uh, definitely share it with somebody else, the good news of the Lord Jesus and how he saves us and how he's our Savior. Please share that with somebody today. And uh, as we go on, I want to remind us of the things that we've talked about. So last time we talked about the foundation of promise. Jesus will always love me. And we use that as a motto, right? We said it to each other. We said, Jesus will always love me. And no matter where we are, Jesus will always love us. And that is good news. The Bible really does teach that. The next thing that we want to look at is Jesus is the foundation for life. Jesus' love is the foundation for my life. Okay? And that is going to be our last lesson today. It is that Jesus' love is the foundation for my life. Okay, that's really what we're going to be talking about right now. And uh, but before we do, before we move on, I want us to go over our Bible verse one more time. Okay, and it's from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And hopefully you've memorized this. I've memorized it. And I've learned so much. We learn so much when we put God's word into our hearts. And when we have God's word in our hearts, then it will help us do those things that God has said. And that's really what our Bible story is going to be about today is that everything that God has said to us, we really ought to be doing. 
And so when we have these verses memorized, it helps us so much the more. So let's say together one more time. We're going to say Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. Be confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And hopefully you've memorized that uh, and put that into your heart and mind. And you can say that now anytime you want to. Well, our true Bible story from the Bible today is Matthew chapter 7. It's only a couple of verses, okay? And it's going to be about the wise and foolish builder. We're going to find out a little bit the difference between wise and foolish, okay? And what does Jesus think about that? How does he look at wise people and foolish people? All right. Now, one of the things that I did want to bring out real quick is we use this word foundation, right? Foundation for my life. What is this foundation? It's sort of a strange word. And uh, goodness, I don't use it a whole lot. You know, what is this foundation? Well, it is the part of the building that is in the ground, the part of the building that you can't see, but it is the most important part. Okay, I'm going to move my screen here just a little bit. It's the most important part because that is where the building okay, is going to be built on this foundation. And when that happens correctly, we have a very, very strong building that can withstand the storms that might come at this house. And if you live where I live, we've had a lot of uh, floods too. So we want to make sure that our house is strong. Build it on a foundation. And uh, that makes the house its strongest. But the one that doesn't happen, you can see at this house right here, wow, you know, sometimes the storms beat upon this house, beat upon this house, beat upon this house, and finally it crumbles. And a lot of times it can be because the foundation might not be very strong anymore. Okay. All right. I got another picture right here of another house that uh, didn't do so well. This one's at the beach. And you can see all that sand over there. And you know at beaches there's going to be storms at times. And they will beat upon those houses that are close to the shore. And this house also collapsed because it constantly had the storms coming against it. And maybe, maybe uh, that foundation wasn't so good and it finally fell over. And of course, right here we can see maybe they forgot to put down a foundation. Maybe they built it on sand. And that's what can happen to a house that's built upon sand. Another, this is one of my favorite pictures actually. Here we can see where the house is coming down to the ground and this, the attic, the attic seems to be coming all the way down to the ground. And I'm pretty sure Attics don't belong that close to the ground. They're supposed to be way up. And without a foundation, perhaps something like this could happen, okay? All right. Well, we don't want that to happen. But what was Jesus doing before he told us this story about the wise and foolish builders? He was doing a couple of things. But Jesus was teaching the people how to live in his kingdom and what life would be like when he would be the ruler. And that's going to happen in the future. But he was telling the people already then, he wanted them to know, all the boys and girls and the mommies and daddies who were listening, he was letting them know what life was going to be like. Okay, so he's up on a mountaintop. And that um, sermon was called the Sermon on the Mount. You may have heard that maybe when you were listening to pastors in the, um, the sanctuary or you were he hearing this in a Bible story. They would call it the Sermon on the Mount. And that was the time when Jesus was explaining all these things about his kingdom in which he was going to be the ruler. And uh, you can see here again, all the mommies and the daddies and the boys and girls just listening, okay? Back up one here real quick. After this sermon that Jesus shared this story, he uh, shared a parable. And that's where our story today is going to come from. The wise and the foolish builders is going to be coming from this parable, okay? Parable is just a comparison, a story of comparison. And it talks about the kingdom of heaven. OK, it talks about kingdom life. Some people call it that. OK, and that is what a parable is all supposed to do. A good question we should ask first is what does it mean to be wise and what does it mean to be foolish? Because that's really what the Bible is talking about right here. It shares with us what are wise people in God's kingdom and those that would be foolish. And of course, Jesus wants us to be wise. So let's find what does that mean? Can we find out what that means? Well, uh, basically, very short, doesn't have to be very complicated, but a person who is wise will apply what Jesus has said to their lives. They will want to do what Jesus has said, and then they actually, well, they actually go do it, okay? And that, and when that happens, when you listen to what Jesus has said and you actually go do it, well, the Bible says that person is wise, okay? That, that person is wise. It's very simple, isn't it? And for us boys and girls, it doesn't always have to be complicated, okay? That's going to be the wise person. 
The wise person will also practice the principles and values from God's word. They will be looking at God's word all, all the time, all the time, when they're at church, when they're at home, and they will be looking into God's word, and they want to check out to see if what they are reading, if they're actually doing it, or perhaps maybe they're just pretending, right? That can happen, right? Sometimes we listen to words, and then we pretend that we did them, but we really didn't. OK, and when that happens, the Bible is going to be honest with us and say, well, you would be then foolish because you are not actually doing what the Bible has said, what Jesus has said to us. And so th those are the two differences, actually doing and not just hearing only. OK, and that, that can be a little bit of work. But there is a great reward and blessing for those who actually do what the Bible has said, what Jesus has said to us. Another way to say it is, is those who listen and obey the words of Jesus are wise. It's just the other way around, right? It's the same thing. But listen and obey. That's very important. That is what Jesus is hoping will happen in our lives, and we want that to happen in our lives as well. Well, why is it so important to listen and obey what Jesus has said? Why is that so important? Well, let's find out. Well, a true story from the Bible, here it is, from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. It's not very long, so you're going to have to listen very carefully. And I'm going to try to talk slowly, but we still can listen, okay, because it is from God's Word. So when the sermon was finished, up on the mount, okay, and I like pictures. You like pictures, too, so I, I like pictures a lot. Here Jesus is teaching that sermon on that mount with all the mommies and the daddies, the boys and girls that are there. After it was finished... Okay, let me click one down. He said, therefore, who hears these sayings of mine? Actually, I'll back up one more. It's going a little bit too fast. Therefore, whoso hears these sayings of mine and does them. Okay, everything that I've shared with you now, Jesus says, and you actually do them. Let's click down one more. I will compare him to a wise man, is what the Bible says. I'm going to compare him to a wise man, Jesus says. And when he and this wise man, what did he do? He built his house upon a rock. OK, so you can see this wise man. He's on his knees and he's doing lots of hard work right now. And he's making sure that his house is going to be built upon that foundation, that hard area at the bottom of the house. That's going to be sturdy. It's going to help that house stand firm. OK, and the Bible says Jesus said then to them, he said, the rain came down, the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon that house. Okay? The winds beat upon that house. And that's what happens sometimes to even good houses. They have to withstand storms sometimes. And uh, the house did not fall, Jesus said, because it had a foundation upon a rock. And we, boy, boys and girls, we know what a foundation is right now, don't we? We know that that foundation is very important. And then Jesus said, everyone that hears my sayings and does not do them. I put that in red for you. Well, he doesn't do them. I will compare, but he actually didn't say that. He just simply said, will be compared to a foolish man. You see how I changed the words a little bit? That's not what Jesus said. Of the wise man, Jesus said, I will compare him to this. He's a wise man. But of the foolish man, he says, that person will just be compared. I'm not going to even look at him, really. That's interesting. I think it's interesting that Jesus did not say, I will there. And so this foolish man then is uh, building his house upon the sand. And even this... Boy, this builder is really foolish. He's removing the rocks. I would think he would need those to have a strong foundation, but he is being foolish. He's saying, I don't want to deal with these rocks. I'm going to take them away. I'm going to build it on sand. And the Bible tells us the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, the same as it was with the wise man. And that house fell and great was the fall of it. That house got wiped out. Because he built it upon the sand. Well, this is important for us to think about now. You know, we can listen to Bible stories and we can say, well, that was a nice Bible story. Thank you for sharing that Bible story with me. But I think it's also important sometimes to stop and to say, maybe point our fingers to ourselves and say, well, how about me? What about me in this story? Where am I? And so sometimes we can say, how about us? Okay, how about us? And I like what this girl is doing right here. She needs to, she's taking some time to think, and that's a good thing. All right, let's compare. Let's do some comparing here. Let's see if I can get my screen to work. Oh, back to my foundation picture. I love that foundation. There it is, up close. There's the foundation. That's where the house is going to be built. And you can already see in this picture that people are already starting to put the building blocks on top of that foundation. Isn't that good? All right, well, let's look here. Well, a reminder, how about us? 
Or we can do lots of things in life, right? We've got lots of choices to make in life. Next slide here. Oh, I'm going a little bit fast. Going a little bit fast. Lots of things in life. We can get a good education. Okay, that's what we sometimes are being told. That's very important. I think it's a, and very important to get a good education. You need to get a good job. You usually hear that sometimes, you know. Make sure you get a good job or give to others. All these things are so very important, okay? And that's what we're going we're to be hearing a lot maybe throughout our life. But if our life is not built on a good foundation, which is God, then in the end, what's going to happen? It will crumble, just like that house of the foolish man. Just That can happen in real life, like this house right here didn't, have a good foundation, and it crumbled. And we really don't want our lives to turn out that way. Even though there's a lot of good decisions that we can make, we want to make sure that our, our lives are built on a strong foundation. Only a life built on God and his promises will last. And that is what the, the Bible tells us. That is the promise from God, that when we build our lives on uh, his promises. Jesus said that a wise man is that person that hears his words and obeys them. Okay? And obeys them. There are believers in the Bible that have always remembered and understood this principle to live by. I've wondered, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to remember, well, I know I need to listen and I know I need to obey, but what does that look like? I'm not sure. And one of the things that has helped me a lot is, is I look at people in the Bible that God's blessed and God says, yes, you are listening. Yes, you are obeying. Yes, you are uh, uh, receiving the promises that I'm giving to you. You are, I am pleased with the way that you're living. And I think about those people and that helps me to understand what, how that can work in my life because that's really what needs to happen, right? The Bible needs to be at work in my life. And, and uh, so I think of really two people on this one. You remember Abraham, don't you? Uh, the Abraham who had to leave his own city and God called him away from that and said, you need to leave this city. I'm going to take you to another country and there I'm going to make you a great nation. OK, so he had to listen and he had to obey. He had to be a wise builder. So how did he do that? And the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, this is what it says about Abraham. It said, says, for he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, you know, boys and girls, God could have left that out. He could have just said, for he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. But interestingly enough, the Bible says, oh, wait a minute. Let's not forget the foundation. Let's not forget the foundation because when we have the foundation, we are going to have a strong building. And that is the type of city that Abraham was looking for, that future promise of a life with God. Okay, that's what that's referring to. Okay. Also, that is the Old Testament. Okay, can I find an example of somebody in the New Testament? Okay, that was maybe an example to me that I could say, okay, I want to be that wise builder. Can I can I maybe look to somebody in the New Testament that can help me make sure that I will also listen and obey? Well, one of those people could be, for instance, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, when he first started out, he wasn't was not listening to the Lord Jesus at all, was he? He was not listening to the Lord Jesus. And then we find in the Bible, well, then he did. He did. And this is what and God used him actually and used him to write portions of the New Testament. And this is what the Apostle Paul, with God's help by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is what he wrote in the Bible. He says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, he said, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds thereupon. Well, well, what is he doing now? He says, I have laid the foundation. Well, we know what the foundation is, don't we, boys and girls? That foundation is God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's find out where the Apostle Paul is going to go with this. What is he going to say next? He says, But let every man take heed on how he builds thereon, upon that foundation. And that foundation is Christ. Oh, oh not my next slide back. Because he reminds us, For an other foundation can no man lay than that is which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so the Apostle Paul, what he's basically saying here is, is when he started telling everybody about the Lord Jesus, he said, one thing we need to make very clear right now, we need to say, we're going to start with the Lord Jesus and all the promises of God are going to be built upon that. We're going to build our lives on that. We're going to start with the Lord Jesus and he is going to make sure that we have a strong house, you know, pretending that we have a strong house. Well, when I look at the wise man and the foolish man, I noticed a couple of things that were the same. 
you know, both the wise man and the foolish man had a plan and the plan was to build a house. Uh, both the wise man and the foolish man, they, um, they had the same type of weather came against their house. Same rain, same wind that beat upon that house. The same thing happened to both the wise man and the foolish man. And you can look at all those things. Until, and, you know, we also find out that the wise man and the foolish man both got their houses built. They were both ready. Can you believe that? We sometimes think that foolish people, when they build things, maybe in this story, well, then he won't complete it. Well, but he did. All the things were the same. And but the only big difference, the big difference between the wise man and the foolish man was that the wise man had a strong foundation and the foolish man did not. I want to talk to you about that foundation. That foundation is really a decision. It's a decision to make the Lord Jesus Christ the foundation for your life. And my question to you is, boys and girls, have you ever done something like that? Have you ever decided to ask the Lord Jesus to be your foundation, to be your Savior for the rest of your life? That is what God wants for you, to have a strong life. That's the only life that God offers, and that's a life in Christ Jesus. And so right now what I want to do is I want to pray with you, and I want to pray for all the boys and girls that still need to make that decision, and I also want to pray for those boys and girls that have, okay? So let's bow our heads, and let's pray together. Put my helmet down right here. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this VBS time together. Thank you so much that you've taught us from your word the most important thing for our lives, and that is to make the Lord Jesus Christ the foundation for our lives. And there are boys and girls that need to make a decision, to make a decision to accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And I am praying with them right now that they would make that decision. Maybe they need to go to a, uh, a mom or a dad or somebody who already knows the Lord Jesus. And from your word, from God's word, it would be shared. It would be shared with them how to accept the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And uh, Lord, I also want to pray for all those kids that already have accepted the Lord Jesus as their Savior. I am praying for them that because they now have a strong foundation, that they might tell somebody else, a friend, maybe somebody in their neighborhood. They can share the good news now because they have a strong foundation. Thank you so much, Lord, for working in our lives and for giving us these stories and to remind us of that importance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, boys and girls, we've got a very special video right now that we have put together for you. It's about the wise builder and the foolish builder, and I want you to go have a look at that right now. Okay, so we'll look at it, and I'll be right back with you. Matthew chapter 7, it says, verse 24, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Hallelujah. 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 And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. I'm, I was busy. Oh. Hey, what, boys and girls, what, was that a, <clears throat> was that a fun video? I'm so glad I got to share these last few tools with you. This, this is my pickaxe. I love this pickaxe. And I also have a sledgehammer. You can do a lot of things with this sledgehammer. Just be very careful with it, boys and girls. You know what? I have had so much fun with you guys. Uh, showing all these tools and having fun in BBS, and I sure hope you've had a lot of fun with, with our time together, our Bible times, and our learn, learning so much from God's Word, and I've really enjoyed it. And you know what, boys and girls, next year is going to be even better, so just join us, and we'll see you next time, okay? I'm going to say goodbye now. Mr. Amos is going to see you next year. Goodbye now.